explain the, the, the is, the what, but never the why. When you look at the hydrohelio matrix, it explains the why mass is mass. So when I say to you that if one point of UCA, unique collective awareness, within one unit, the smallest unit of matter, cease to exist in unique dimension and position, if one point of that ceased to exist, the entire universe would cease to exist. How absurd then is the thought that you are insignificant? How stupid is it if we, if, if we allow these people to continue to convince us that we're nothing? You are literally everything. You are part of everything. Now, if you want to take a, a piece of wisdom that uh, some Buddhists, Buddhists say, they say before enlightenment, you chop wood and you carry water, and after enlightenment, you chop wood and you carry water. And to many that probably sounds like a, a pretty arrogant thing to say from someone who's never reached enlightenment because we're all taught that if you reach enlightenment, if you reach that magic moment where you know everything, everything will be okay. No. You're living. And because you're living, you're breathing, you're eating, you're excreting, you're dying, you're interacting, you're arguing, you're laughing, you're living. And the meaning of all is awareness loves life. So, yes, you are everything. Yes, you could call yourself the divine immortal spirit and in some cases we tell them that and you are that. You're not lying when you tell them that and you are that. And the fact that they ignore that is their own ignorance and image training proving to you that you're dealing with robots miserable, unhappy robots. But living your life, walking around saying, I am God, I am divine, really doesn't get you anywhere. At the end of the day, so is everyone else. And even if they're behaving as robots, they are still part of you and me and all of us. So the issue is not going from one extreme to another, going from I am insignificant to I am better than all those people. No, you're not. You're a man or a woman in a particular vessel going through a particular stage, learning what you want to learn and need to learn, interacting and hopefully coming to the realisation in this form of just how amazing it is to be a, a human being, a homo sapien, a member of this particular species. And one person has no effect, they say. Well, I hope in the presentation of Eucadia that we can prove that's wrong. One motivated person can have an enormous effect. Two motivated people can have a historic effect. A million motivated, aware people will change this world forever. The whole system is designed to disempower us to convince us we are incompetent and incapable because unless we act that way they cannot lawfully continue to do what they're doing they say you'll never get out uh, you'll never get our permission well as i said earlier we don't need your permission we don't need their permission to establish our societies we don't need their little tickets to say we recognize your society, we recognize your law. They don't even recognize their own law. That's the whole point. They don't even recognize their own law. So how in the hell do we expect to, for them to recognize our law? They won't recognize our law. They can't. We're dealing with people who are severely mentally ill. The only way we can help them, and we should help them, is by demonstrating how competent, compassionate, thoughtful, honest we can be, honourable we can be. 
Now, when protesters in, in Libya more than a week ago walked up to compounds in Tripoli without a single weapon and showed that they weren't afraid to die and were shot by high African mercenaries. That concept alone shook the world, and it should shake the world. It should shake every dictatorship in the world, including the most fascist state on the planet. Fascist because it's covered in fasces. Fasces being the symbol of Rome, being the sticks wrapped in leather with the axe. You might have seen it because it's part of the symbol of the Senate. It's part of the symbol of Congress. The model of Abraham Lincoln as Zeus has two great fasces. That's where the word fascist comes from. The most fascist state in, in the world, of course, I'm referring to is based in Washington. Every single regime in the world should have looked at that in horror. We have not seen that bravery since Tiananmen Square, where people were willing to stand up and say, this life has no meaning unless I can show for posterity and the rest of the world that I'm willing to die for an idea. Well, their system can't cope with that. We don't need your permission. We are moving forward with what needs to be fixed. And what we need to keep focused on, I hope, is that the ending of a regime can happen in a day. But what has rarely happened is that people have taken the time to plan what comes next. What is the next idea? And in the absence of that work, the parasite always finds a home. So congratulations to the people of Egypt and Tunisia and, and to Libya, who will soon be free. But in the absence of effective models, that freedom will, will be usurped as it has been many, many times by people who come in and promise and, of course, lie. The parasite comes in and says, we'll rebuild, he's alone, we'll come in, he's laws, and they lie. So they can say, we'll kill your society and we'll kill you, but you can't kill an idea unless it's a bigger and better idea. And finally, you have... When they say you have everything to fear, when you fear nothing, you have nothing to fear. Well, I, I did say we'll talk about communities, and I know that uh, Brian mentioned earlier that there's a number of questions on communities. Well, what we've described tonight, and these concepts are important, and, and the thing about a community is that we already have laws being perfected and canons. We already have a way of living being perfected. Becoming more empathetic towards those around you is building community spirit. And look, there is already a community. All of you live in a community today. So when we form a community, we're merely forming, if you like, um, a, a subcomponent of a community uh, and flipping it around because that community ultimately is is our community. The community exists not because someone is elected mayor, not because someone's elected governor, but because the people have chosen. That's ultimately the test of a community. So when we talk about bank accounts, the number at the bottom of the Lightborn record where it says MZ or EZ, that is your bank account number, and we'll be turning on your ability to see that bank account and when the community sets up its register and keep a record of, 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 of purchases and transactions, then you don't need tokens. You don't need to create the equivalent of, of Federal Reserve notes to create a currency. If you've got an account, then you can keep track of what is purchased and sold and you can transact not just your community but other communities then you have all you need. The only things you need is how to develop the community, uh, have its community charter, how to uh, develop the specialist skills, and, and make sure that we keep, keep fleshing it out. So that is part of the work in progress. 
And I know that many of you are keen to get going, but there's nothing stopping you having a group of people that you know, living in the same area, getting together and discussing. Now, you know, what skills do people have? When we produce this material, it will help that process. But at the end of the day, without the energy, there is no community. Well, I thank you. We've covered a lot tonight. I know there's still loose ends. I know that many of you are saying, well, it's great, but where's the material? I want to see it. We want to move on. And that's encouraging. That's exciting that you feel that way. But bear in mind some of the things we spoke about tonight. Yes, we went through the work in progress, but remember some of the issues we spoke of. Remember the handover is a progressive process, and I'm asking and hoping that a number of you can help in that process. And remember, most importantly, that they control us by ideas. They enslave us by ideas. And it is only when we embrace and contribute to these ideas can we free ourselves. And as Victor Hugo once said, and I hope I don't misquote him, invading armies can be defeated, but nothing can withstand an idea whose time has come. This is the time. Thanks, and I look forward to your questions. Fire away. Thanks so much, Frank. Uh, words of wisdom, for sure. Um, I'm going to ask uh, the folks that are calling in to get in queue for a uh, for question and answer section of uh, tonight's call and uh, just push star eight. That's star eight. And uh, <clears throat> um, I, want, I want to, I just see, and I want to hear, but I just want to say one thing because I see a comment there uh, from someone that say, when we have no food in the stores, enjoy eating love. Let, let's, let, let's talk about competence. Um, I wonder if the person that wrote that actually knows how to make vegetables grow in their garden. And I wonder if that person belongs to a community so that if someone comes to tell you that it's illegal to grow vegetables in your garden, that you can call on your neighbours and friends to support you. I mean, competence is the fact that you can go to Walmart and pick up the tools you need to do all the handiwork around the home. Yet we don't know how to fix things. We don't know how to fix plumbing. We, we've become so detached from practical things that even though we can go and get the tools now, we don't know what to do. In no point have I said in any point here, in anything tonight, that we're dealing with airy-fairy concepts. Pragmatism is saying that if I am totally paralysed by lies from the system, so I sit at home waiting for an unemployment benefit and don't go out the back garden and grow my own food, then that is the problem. The mind is the problem. So that's my answer to those kind of comments when I see that. Yeah, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm living uh, proof and I can attest that yeah is when you have the uh, the abilities such as our, our good friend Gino uh, being able to grow high uh, nutrient dense packed foods and through sprouts, you start to see that once you get onto a, a, a more healthier uh, thing because let's fa face it is what's out there um, I don't trust uh, and uh, you actually need less and less food. Uh, food and water is where. Uh, that's the first thing of uh, get, getting up to getting your responsibility back. Um, <clears throat> again, is uh, star eight for anybody that wants to ask some questions for Frank? Okay. While we're waiting, I see a question from uh, Paris B. Um, I've put together a le letter of arbitrary and EDP for court to send. Uh, after I send them, should I go to court and defend or should I not attend? We say this in the notes, and I just say this for Paris B or anyone, please, please, always honour the procedure, even though they are rank in terms of their behaviour. If they call you to their courts, you need to attend. That does not mean you need to consent to what they say, 
but you need to at least attend. I'm not saying a PE 